Russian authorities have confirmed the arrest of a woman suspect in connection with Sunday's explosion at a St. Petersburg cafe that killed a well-known military blogger. The suspect had previously been detained for taking part in anti-war rallies. The explosive device was reportedly hidden inside of a present given to Vladlin Tatarsky. Russian state media say that 32 people were wounded in the blast. This is the blogger Vladlin Tatarsky, real name Maxim Fomin, filming himself last year at the Grand Kremlin Palace. He had been invited there to celebrate Russia's annexation of Ukraine's occupied regions. This defiant tirade went viral. We will beat everyone, he said. We will kill everyone. We will rob everyone who needs to be robbed. Everything will be the way we love. These kinds of videos made him wildly popular among pro-war Russian nationalists. And now, as these scenes suggest, a target. Tatarsky was killed after a blast at this restaurant. He had been hosting an event there, meeting supporters and subscribers to his Telegram channel. Local media reports that Tatarsky had been presented with a figurine just minutes before the blast and that the figurine was the source of the explosion. This figurine ahead of a miner in a helmet. They put it somewhere back there without a second thought and he carried on with his questions. Then suddenly everything exploded and there was smoke. It was like a slow motion movie. We were sitting in the back half of the hall. Everyone started to run and we needed to run, so we ran. Those who were near had blood all over them, of course. Adding further to the fog of uncertainty, the venue itself has close links to Wagner mercenary group boss Yevgeny Prigozhin. Russia's state investigative committee has opened a murder investigation. It's a reminder of the unpredictable consequences of the war, which Tatarsky cheered so fervently. DW correspondent Jenica Falka joins us now from Riga, where DW has been operating since it was banned from Russia. Uh, Jennifer, we understand that Russian authorities have identified at la least two suspects. What more can you tell us? Well, yes, Sarah. Uh, first, the Russian law enforcement actually su uh, suspected someone from the Ivano-Frankovsk region, but they later retracted that statement. Now they have arrested a St. Petersburg citizen for the murder of Latlian Tatarsky, and her name is Daria Trepova. And according to Russian law enforcement, they also suspect that her husband is involved in the explosion as well. According to Russian media reports, uh, the apartment of uh, Trepova and her husband was raided by Russian police and Russian law enforcement, and her mother and sister were detained and questioned. Allegedly, Daria Trepova wrote in a secret telegram channel to her friend that she would have preferred to die and was set up and now fears for the consequences of what happened in the St. Petersburg cafe. And also reports say that there is a possible second suspect or third suspect if we count uh, Trepova's husband as well. It's a second woman but so far there's no information about her identity. Do we know why Tatarsky was targeted? Well, it is quite difficult to answer why exactly he was targeted, but as we have seen in the report, he was one of the most famous, most aggressive, most influential and most vocal military bloggers and war correspondents in Russia. He uh, insulted on a regular basis Ukraine and Ukrainians and gathered up to more than half a million subscribers on Telegram. So it is not surprising that he was a target of this explosion. What have the reactions been to his death? Well, the Russian propagandists were very quick uh, to react to Tatarsky's death. And, of course, they blamed Ukraine and Ukrainian terrorists for his death. Uh, Vladimir, Vol Volodymyr Zelensky, the Ukrainian president's office, actually uh, denied having any involvement in this case. But what we know so far is that uh, Tatarsky's fans and subscribers are devastated because of his death and started to lay down flowers. Some of them even said, quote, that he spoke God's words and should become a saint in Russian Orthodox Church. Much of the dissent that we saw in Russia in the early weeks of the invasion has been silenced by the Kremlin. Tell us, where does the anti-war movement stand today, one year into this war? 
Well, there are certain Telegram channels and Telegram groups that still provide balanced information and also give anti-war ressentiments the, the possibility to voice them. And there are also Telegram channels that advise social media users on how to, re, uh, to uh, browse the social media and also how to behave on social media so that they don't uh, fear the repercussions of the discreditation of the Russian army law in Russia. And um, what is important to note, though, is that, of course, the Kremlin has silenced almost all critical voices when it comes to the anti-war uh, movement. So the Kremlin shut down uh, news media outlets, they jailed uh, critics, they jailed protesters, and also they limited the access, the public's access to information. So it wouldn't be surprising that the Kremlin would use now Tatarsky's death, death to further legitimize the war in Ukraine, as well as spread more Kremlin propaganda. DW correspondent Jennifer Falca, thank you.